Live from News Channel 8, this is After the Game with Darrell Young. We won a four, we're disappointed, but this is the Super Bowl champions, and we went toe to toe with these guys. And we went toe to toe with them, and there are still so many things that we are capable of doing better. And we wanted to come out and really go toe to toe and play our butt off, and, uh, and I think we did that. I'm Alex Parker with the star of the show, Terrell Young, DY. DY, how are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Just all right after that one. Yeah, I'm just frustrated, but now I'm looking. Uh, the obvious question I mean, we know why you're frustrated. Uh, how do you deal with this week in and week out? You know what? Uh, it's getting old, honestly. Um, you know, to say what we're trying to do, you know, and where we're trying to go with this football team, uh, it's, it's very frustrating, you know. Um, there's nothing else more we can say, you know. We just got to go back to the drawing board, address it, try to come out of the situation two and four this week. Uh, some of your teammates there and your coach said we went toe-to-toe -to -toe as if that was something to take from this positive. You lost the game. Are there any positives when you lose a football game? Yeah, I thought we did a good job of showing that we can come back in games, you know, make it a competitive game if we're down, lose, if we're losing or, you know, we have a chance to do something good to, you know, allow us to come back and win the game. So, uh, you know, the competitive nature is there. That's the positive come out of this game. Um, you know, people had us probably losing 45 to 10, you know, but at the end of the day, like I said, the game's played on the field and I thought we did a much better job than what everyone else thought we would do. But, you know, like I said, the game's played on the field. You just go out there and uh, they, did, they did a good job of executing. I mean, Talk about you know luck of the draw. They got the ball and you know just about plus 50 just about every time they had the ball. You know so they did a good job of pinning us to make us go 80 yards where they only had to go you know 50 and 60. So uh, that's a big difference in the game of football. 703 387 1020. If you want to talk with Dy and myself on our lawn and leisure hotline, we'll get to your calls uh, momentarily throughout the half hour here on after the game with Terrell Young. Uh, Dy, you knew your defense knew Russell Wilson was a heck of a football player. Uh, this guy came out last night and seemed to dominate the football game from the first snap. Uh, what did you see? I seen a, a quarterback who's, you know, very athletic, a guy that uh, doesn't panic, you know, when he's pressured or something like that, you know. It's like playing a game, you know, you run around, you, it's like playing 7-on-7 seven on, seven on the field with some kids, you know, at times. And, you know, he's making moves, juking people and stuff like that, but he's a very good football player. He's good for what they do. Now, he does what they ask of him. He, they ask him to make plays, and that's what he does. And, uh, you know, it's a credit to Pete Carroll, you know, finding him, drafting him, and uh, allowing him, you know, to go out there and be himself, and that's what makes him Russell Wilson. Uh, you know what he can do because you've got a quarterback that does very similar things. It looked to me and to a lot of fans on the outside that the defense, who could have known what he does, didn't know what to expect. Uh, what did you make of how, how you guys tried to curtail his game? Uh, we, they did some different things that we haven't seen, you know, in terms of the boot. Um, you know, everyone running and it's actually a run, but he's keeping it. So it's a good job of them. You know, you've seen him a couple times peek back as he was going to hand the ball. Sometimes he would, sometimes he wouldn't. So, like I said, it's a credit to him. We'll understand the situation and circumstance of what we do, you know, from a defensive standpoint. But, you know, they, I wouldn't say they out-schemed us. They just, you know, did something different that we haven't seen. And, uh, you know, we adjusted to it. And when we adjusted to it, and then it was a much better second half. Uh, RG3 was on the sidelines during the game. And before the game, we got some video of, of Robert, A, with a new hairdo, and B, uh, working on his arm a little bit. Uh, a report over the weekend from NFL Network that he is hoping to be back by the Dallas game in three weeks. Uh, DY, you're around him obviously a lot. What have you seen? Uh, what do you make of where he is in his comeback attempt? I'm not. I'm not surprised to where he is in terms of rehab and stuff like that because he's one of those guys that, you know, you, you understand what you're going to get. He's going to go out there. He's going to rehab. He's going to put himself in a situation. You know, everything we said over the past couple of weeks about how he is as a person, um, you know, like I said, I'm not surprised. He's going to go out there. He's, he's going to try to put this team in the best situation possible. And, you know, every, he wants to go back to have everyone believe in that he's the 2012 RG3, you know, as opposed to, you know, everyone saying that he's washed up now. It's over with and stuff like that. So I know what I'm going to get out of him. I'm excited for him to come back. I'm excited for Kirk to be in there, you know, but, uh, I just want to win a game. That's what's important to me right now. Uh, it struck me watching that game that, that you guys were watching Russell do his thing. You've got a quarterback that has done those things. And two years ago, you could have taken Russell Wilson out of that game, stuck RG3 in, and that's what he was doing to teams. Does that make this much more difficult to swallow? You're looking across the field and saying, we have one of those. Ours is hurt. We could be where they are. We could be, but um, you look at the situations that we put ourselves in compared to what their team puts themselves in. I mean, you looked at, I don't think they had anything over third and five besides the penalties, but in terms of moving the ball in first and second down, they do a really good job of getting the third and short situations where you look at us and you, know, you go back to the play where I recovered the fumble on Alfred and now it's third and 11. They don't get into those situations, you know? So looking at what they do, I mean, like you said, they, they play to his strengths. They do what he does, you know? Uh, the coaches do a good job of, you know, game planning around what they think the uh, situations they'll be in in terms of third and five. It's a lot different 
different play call, third and five, third and eleven. You know, so look at that. That uh, you know, I thought Alfred was down on that play, whatever. Cool. Now it's third and eleven, but we get a eight, nine yard pass to Roy, and that's the first down as opposed to something else. You know, so those are the situations that they do get in. And they did have three touchdowns called back last night. So you know, I'm not saying the refs did a bad job of refereeing or anything, but uh, there's a lot of things that could have played out different to allow us to you know win that game. And we recover that onside kick. You know, it's a bit different ball game. So we'll see. Uh, you mentioned Kirk Cousins, who had that really good game at Philly, albeit sort of faltering a little bit late. Had an awful game that we all got to see against the Giants 11 to 12 days ago. Last night, Kirk was much better. Uh, what did you make of his performance? I love Kirk, man. He's a competitor. I told everyone that he would go out there and, you know, play better. And uh, I, th I think I read an int interesting stat earlier that, you know, with a number rated six, uh, number six rated offense in the league. And that's a credit to him, too, you know, going out there seeing things and making plays. And you know, I thought they did a good – he does a great job every weekend and week out of uh, putting himself in a situation mentally, you know, to where he think he'll be he, – he'll thinks he'll be. And uh, he's 21 for 36, I mean. At the end of the day, to say we were losing that game for oh, the whole game, to be 21 for 36, that's a compliment to him and the offensive line and everyone else on offense making plays. Let's hear from Gruden and Kirk Cousins about Kirk Cousins' play last night. He, I'll tell you what, he can make the tough throw look very easy, He's and he can make some of the easy throws look a little tough. That? Little that's bit. just part of the consistency profs, uh, like process and, and seeing throws under pressure. And we did some good things tonight, absolutely. We moved the ball at times and made some big plays. and. Um, you know, I'm just, I continue to get better. I'm continuing to learn. You know, by no means do I feel like I've arrived, but every game, every rep, I'm getting better and I feel like I'm getting close. Um, Kirk Cousins, I've said this before uh, on Sports Talk. If you can see a guy that wants it so badly and might try too hard sometimes, I see that in Kirk Cousins. I'm not saying he wants Robert's job, he wants a job. Do you ever try to help Kirk say, chill? I thought last night was much more calm and collected than against the Giants, obviously. Chill? No. Kirk Cousins is going to be Kirk Cousins. I'm not in any position to tell a quarterback how to be a quarterback or how to direct the game or go out there and throw the ball. He asked me to block. He doesn't tell me to chill when I'm going to make a block, you know. So I look at Kirk as one of those guys that, you know, like you said, he's uh, he wants to be an uh, overachiever because that's who he is. He's, he's a man, of the, you know, that it just prepares and just puts yourself in every situation possible before the game is played to kind of go out there and just say, this is what the game is going to be like. This is how everything's going to play out. He says things in the huddle. I'm like, this guy can't be in his second year right now. And they, hey, it's second and three, second and three. This is what we got here, guys. All right, cool. Hey, Deshaun, D.Y., be ready. All right, cool. I got you. You know, stuff like that. So you, where he's at mentally and where he's at, you know, numbers wise, I mean, they don't really match up like that. But I think it'll get, it'll get a lot better from Kirk, for Kirk from here. Does he joke around in the huddle? Is he dead serious? What's he like? Uh, game day, he's one of those guys that's pretty serious, but he'll crack a smile every now and then. But he's about business. He's, that's what you want. A guy that's going to go out there and perform and put your team in the best situation. And, you know, obviously come out victorious. Now, we haven't been victorious, and he's not one of those guys that's going to go around laughing and joking and stuff like that. But uh, he definitely cracks a smile. He's a great sense of humor. But, uh, you know, business is business for Kirk. He wants to win games. So he's a competitive guy. He goes out there. And, uh, like I said, he just, he just wants to have fun on the field. He wants that win so badly. So he had bad. the first win against Cleveland a couple years ago. 2012. That Since then, he's lost six straight starts, not all of which obviously were his fault. Mm -hmm. He wants that first one so badly. I think you can see it. 703-387-1020, uh, our lawn and leisure hotline. Bob is in Gaithersburg, Maryland tonight. Hi, Bob. How are you? Hey, pretty good, Alex. I love your show at DY. I'm proud of you guys. I bleed red skin. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is don't make RG3 in the Wilson. He's not even compared to that. Wilson doesn't get hurt. He, he got a lot of smarts and everything else. What I'm disappointed in is a Rakpo. He's not playing up to his caliber. I don't know what it is. His contract ends. I guess he's negotiating. But um, the Redskins are on the edge. I believe this with all my heart and soul. All they got to do is a couple plays here and there. And I'm still sticking with 11 and 5. Oh. Bobby Gaithersburg, thank you so much. I, I love him, and um, that's all I got to say. Thank you, Bob, very much. We got folks on hold. Uh, a couple things. I think RG3 two years ago was, was Russell Wilson. Frankly, I think RG3 was held in a higher sort of regard than Russell Wilson. I believe it's a fair comparison. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing for the Redskins and their fans if RG3 came back and could do what Russell Wilson did 
last night? I don't want Robert to do what Russell Wilson did. I don't want Robert to be compared to Russell Wilson. Like you said, there's two different guys. Robert Griffin won rookie of the year when they both were rookies and they both were starting. So at the end of the day, and he talks about, you know, Robert being uh, injury prone. He's only missed two games in his career out, out of all injuries that he's had, had a knee and, you know, he came out of the game and he was benched last season. So, you know, in terms of where they wanted him to be healthy going into the season. So it's only his second game that he's missed as a starter in the NFL. So going back to that, I love Robert. I love what Robert does. I love how he prepares. I love him as a quarterback. I love him as a person. I want Robert to go be Robert. I don't want to be Russell Wilson. I don't want to be Tom Brady. I don't want to be Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Robert Griffin took this team to the playoffs being Robert Griffin. That's what I like and what I expect out of him. I'm going to trust him with everything. I don't care if Kirk's that quarterback. I don't care if Andre Rodgers is that quarterback. We expect the guy to go out there and perform, and that's what he's going to do. And like I said, at the end of the day, sometimes you come up short, but hey, Tom Brady had the same game Kirk Cousins had a couple weeks ago. So, you know, as our people jump down his back, no, you get better from that. Peyton Manning, I think, threw over 20 plus picks his rookie year, you know, so you get better. You grow as a player. This is a grown man, league college, you don't see the same looks. You see faster guys, different guys, uh, smarter guys, you know. The league's 85% mental. Everyone's fast. Everyone can run. You know, I can run. I can catch a receiver if, you know, you take the right angle, stuff like that. So you just get excited about the things that you do, but I get excited about Robert because he's my guy, you know, and I love him and we can win with him and we will win with him. We have won with him. You know, two years ago, he was, you know, this guy that, you know, everyone loved. All of a sudden now, you know, he throws maybe 500 less yards in the second year and you know he sits the last three games hey okay now Rob is not the same now you come back this year oh he's injury prone no he's only missed two games okay I've missed six in my career you know am I injury prone I don't think so but it's the way things happen you know you want to go out there and be healthy see Russell takes some hits you're going to get hit that's what the game is about you know you put yourself in a situation where you can slide now yeah can he slide better of course we all can but I'm a fullback I'm not going to slide you know so how come people don't talk to the running backs about you know getting hit and stuff like that you know it, it is what it is man yeah, of course you want to take the hits off your quarterback but I love Robert I trust Robert. Robert will be Robert, and I guarantee you he will do something positive for this organization, this team, this community, the, the whole Redskins, whatever. It, we got to have some fun. I get fired about this stuff. He was <laughs> fired up. You don't want to wait till Sunday to play <laughs> no, a football I don't, game. Man. I wish we could play You want to take something out back, I think. Uh, 703-387-1020, our lawn and leisure hotline. Eddie and Miles in Camp Springs. Stay in the line. We will get to you uh, after the break. Uh, we've got an injury report to talk about on the other side. As we go to break, callers need to know about the big green egg contest uh, here's what you want to do you can win a big green egg uh, if you've gotten through on our lawn and leisure hotline tonight even if you don't get on the air Winston our producer will take down your name enter the contest you can go to wjla.com slash big green egg for the details we'll be back Redskins actually came away from last night's game in pretty good shape health-wise. Here's the injury report brought to you by the Cochran Law Firm. Offensive lineman Trent Williams left the game with some cramps, had a dislocated kneecap as well. Apparently, uh, he was back in the game and apparently is fine. Dislocated kneecap sounds awful. Brian Arakpo left the game, also came back, twisted his ankle. He is day-to-day. -day. We'll see if he practices tomorrow. Safety Ryan Clark returned to the game after spraining his ankle. He is day today as well. Biggest injury, according to the coach, linebacker Perry Riley, suffered a left knee injury, MCL, left the game, came back in. Gruden says will be reevaluated tomorrow and will be held out of practice. Welcome back to After the Game with Jarrell Young. I'm surprised there aren't 43 people on the injury list every Monday, or in this case, Tuesday. It's vicious. It's a brutal game. It's very brutal. Um, you try to put yourself in a situation, like I said, throughout the week in the offseason to kind of prepare for this, you know, for this long stint of the season that you go through. And, uh, you know, like you said, you, you know, you pray about it and hopefully put yourself in the best situation. 703-387-1020, our lawn and leisure hotline. Eddie is in Temple Hills tonight. Hi, Eddie, what's up? Hey, Eddie. No, Eddie? Uh, line three is Miles in Camp Springs, Maryland. Hi, Miles, what's up? Uh-oh. D.Y., we call this phone problems in the biz. You know when Kirk couldn't hear from the coach? Yeah. And this always happens in the two-minute warning? Yeah. This likes to happen to us here at News Channel 8 at about 16 minutes after the hour. <laughs> uh, Eddie, Miles, uh, let's try one more. Charles, Charles on line one is in southeast Washington, D.C. Yes. Charles, what's up? Yes. Hello? Uh, we got to let Charles go. Charles has got yeah, his TV up. Yeah, 
Go ahead, Charles. Yeah. We've got a good football team. Okay. Folks, if you get through, and if you want the big green egg, you have to turn your TV down <laughs> so that you can hear at the appropriate time without the delay situation. Uh, D.Y., i got to ask you this. And you were fired up last block, and you may get fired up again. You're allowed. It's your show. <laughs> Jason Reed wrote a column today in the Washington Post, and he talks about guys laughing and having fun after the game, after a loss, as if the right attitude is to be not laughing and more sullen and sort of saying, hey, maybe this team isn't there mentally where they need to be. What would you say? Um, I look at it as if, you know, of course, you're not supposed to be laughing at the game, stuff like that. But I was there in the locker room when those guys were laughing about something else that happened at the time that was kind of funny. You know, I was pretty frustrated, so I really didn't laugh. But at the same time, they were laughing because, uh, you know, Pierre was by his locker and he was trying to get dressed. And, you know, they were interviewing Andre Roberts and he said something from a Vine video, you know, and uh, they kind of chuckled about it real quick, whatever, cool. But I think he's making a bigger deal than what it is. And, you know, like I said, if that's what he has to write, then, hey, that's what you got to write, you know. But I know from being in the locker room, it wasn't really what he thinks he, it's portrayed to be, you know, or what he's trying to make the fans believe or something. Um. In the week building up to the Seattle game, folks talked about how divergent the paths have been. You guys meet in the playoffs. Since then, they won a Super Bowl. They're the best team in football. You guys, with RG3's injury, coaching changes, drama, have declined. I read a quote from you. I think it was in the post, but you said they have, meaning the Seahawks, camaraderie, uh, implying that maybe you guys still need to get more of that. Is that the case? And if so, how do you build that? That is an intangible that I think is harder to get than it is to say. You always have to, you know, have a, a bond with the team, you know, in order to be successful. You look at the teams who are consistently successful, uh, you have to go through something early on. They went through something. 2011, they were 7-9, made the playoffs, weren't quite sure where they were going with things. 2012, you know, they make the playoffs, we lose to them first round. Last year, they come back with, you know, with, uh, with something on their, on their mind the whole offseason, you know, the way they practice, the way they approach the game, and it's a certain level of confidence and swag. And they went out there and said, hey, no one's going to beat us. You know, if we're going to lose, we're going to beat ourselves. And, you know, they went on to win the Super Bowl. And then you know, a couple weeks ago, they lost to San Diego. So they, we understand that they know who they are. You just have to go out there and find out who you are, you know, and you can't play to their strengths. They want you to slow down the game because they're going to play fast, and that's what they do. But they want you to think. They want you to get into a pass situation. They want you to get down in the third and eight, third and nine, so they can, you know, dig in the ground and tee off on the quarterback stuff like that I mean it's hard to block anyone you know one-on-one -on -one. I don't care who you are you know but uh look at some of the things like I said they have camaraderie they have that and maybe we do need to find that you know maybe we're not as close as we think you know and that's the good teams who win are teams who understand in the fourth quarter we got to pull together we got to stay together we got to be strong you know so I think uh Look from here on out, you know, Coach, Coach Gruden has done a great job of, you know, allowing us to be together, you know, throughout the day in terms of practice, schedule, and the way things work, the breaks that we have, you know, going back to training camp, the days off, the, you know, the team events that we have. So uh, looking at that stuff, you know, we're destined for greatness. We just got to go out there and actually do it. And I think uh, it takes time. You know, like you said, Pete Carroll didn't start off 13-0 or 13-3, you know, so you got to find out where, you know, where things happen. Hopefully we make a good run at this thing and, you know, try to, you know, put ourselves in a situation where we can win. There's only one team happy in the end. We will have more with D.Y. after this. Don't go away. Here you see a live uh, feed of Darrell Young, the DY show, has its own Twitter handle. It is at the DY underscore show, at the DY show. And if you want to ask DY a question via Twitter, make some comments on the game, the whole spiel. News Channel 8's Monica McNutt is monitoring this literally 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to bring us all the very latest. Welcome back to the show. Uh, you got a short turnaround. Sounds like you're ready to play in about 20 minutes. I am, I am. I'm excited to... Uh... Hopefully walk out of this thing two and four, but excited for another opportunity to play football, just to go out there and do what I love on, to do on a daily basis. Uh, Arizona, they were undefeated. They lost. Um, they used to be sort of one of these, oh, it's just Arizona. They were a different football team. We've got about 30 seconds left. What do you expect from the Cards? They get it. They have a lot of injuries right now, but they get it. They found it. They found what they needed to do, and once you find that winning mentality, 
then you kind of you know progress with things and that's when you you know become a better football team and that's when you know you get your fans back you get everyone back to kind of believe and trust in you and you talked about on ESPN and the conversation of you know an elite group of uh, teams so I think uh, you know they get it and we're gonna have a tough challenge they're gonna have a tough challenge we're gonna go out there gonna play we're gonna put our, try to put our best foot forward and try to uh, you know just have fun and hopefully win this game. T.Y. thank you. Appreciate it. Thank Best you. of luck. Thank you. We'll see you next week. I'll see you tomorrow at the park. Yes. Nine o'clock. Monica McNutt will join me. We'll talk some Nats and take your calls on the Redskins as well. Have a great night, folks.